Well, I'm going to at this time ask our Kids Life staff to go ahead and escort our kiddos on down here to the front. Younger ones up here, taller ones down below. Let's make sure everyone can see. And uh, while they're all coming down here, I just want to ask you, who wants to do great things for the Lord? Who wants to do great things for the Lord? Yeah, I think a lot of us do. All right. Well, that's our setup for today. How you doing, kids? Good. Wave to mom and dad. All right. Well, speaking of doing great things for the Lord, I have a volunteer that I'm going to ask to have come up here. Come on up, Ryan. Let's welcome Ryan Hamilton. Okay, so Ryan is today going to play the part of one of the heroes, the great heroes of the Bible who did great things for God. You are going to be Noah today, okay? So Noah, first of all, you got to feel the part. So here we go. we got to attire you appropriately. There you go. And you got to have the headdress. Getting dressed must have been pretty easy back in those days. Here, let me help you out. There you go. Okay. However they did it. I don't know how they did it, how they figured that out. Anyway, Noah. So Noah is a great hero of the Bible. Does anybody disagree with that? He did great things, didn't he? We, a lot of us would like to do great things. We would like to see thousands of people coming to Christ through our ministries. We would like to, to be thought of as successful in the world. How many of you feel that way? You know, I admit it. I would love to think that. I would love to feel that way. But I want to talk to you about Noah, okay? Let's think about it. What did Noah do? Well, he, he had a field. He worked a field, right? But what God asked him to do involved this. Okay, and Noah would have been very glad to have one that nice because he didn't have Home Depot, right? So I want you to think about this. Noah, he had to spend I don't know how many years cutting down trees and dragging them to his construction site, right? Sound like fun? For like years and years cutting down trees, he had, to, he had to form those trees into boards and planks and all of that that he could build this thing with. Does that sound like fun? And it's just he and his sons building a boat in the middle of dry land. Does that sound like fun? Nope. For decades and decades and decades, hammering, sawing, coating with pitch. That's what Noah did, right? Now, in 2 Peter, Noah is described as a preacher of righteousness. So it appears that while this is going on, he is preaching and saying, repent and do what God tells you to do. And was he successful at that? How many people were on that ark? A lot. Him? Only his family. Him and his family. So all that preaching that he did while he's building the ark, did anybody get get the message? Doesn't look that way, does it? It might have been easy for Noah to think of himself as a failure. And in fact, when the floodwaters came, Noah put down his hammer and traded it for one of these. Here you go, and you're going to need this, by the way. Because for a year, after the ark is afloat, Noah is cleaning up manure, okay? He's cleaning up manure with stinky animals. That's right. And this is Noah's life. And Noah, do you want me to take that off? I'm actually enjoying this. I'm not. Okay. Are are your parents enjoying it? No. They're they're back here. Yeah, mom says, oh, yes, leave it on. Okay. But you see, here's the thing. Noah's tools for ministering the gospel were a hammer, a shovel, and it might have been easy for him to think himself a failure because it was only he and his family on that ark. But you see, Noah is listed among some of the greatest heroes in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 11. Why? Because he won souls for Christ? Not by what we read in the Bible. Because he he built a great monument to the Lord? Is the ark even still in existence? We don't know. What Noah did that was so remarkable was simply this. He obeyed God. A very simple little thing. And while we all might be tempted to want to try to do great things for God, sometimes ministering for the gospel just looks like this. 
Or maybe it looks like this. Maybe, maybe it's as simple as this. Oh, great. Oh, great. <laughs> Would you rather shovel the manure or I can put the clothes pin back on? No. No, okay. For some of you, it looks like this. Oh, or this. Here you go. All right. Here, I'll give you a break. For some of you, it looks like this. Okay? Don't a drop keyboard? that. A keyboard. Some of these people serve the Lord by sitting at a desk and tapping on a keyboard all day. But do you know, all of these ministries are valid. You don't have to be Billy Graham. You don't have to be D.L. Moody. All you have to be is the best you that God calls you to be. And if that means you're shoveling manure, then do it for the Lord. If it means you're taking a math test, then do it for the Lord. In fact, there's a scripture that speaks to this. Colossians 3, 23 and 24 says, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men. And verse 24 says, Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Our values are not the same as God's. What we think is success is irrelevant to God. To God, hammering away on an ark for decades and shoveling manure for a year and preaching seemingly in vain to the people who weren't listening was success. And it got him listed with some of the greatest men in the Bible. Will we be listed someday among the heroes? We don't know. Just do our best for the Lord at whatever in the simple mundane things and let God dictate your path. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the God who throws out the values of this world. We thank you that you, uh, that you fly in the face of this world's idea of success and that you make our obedience to you based on your rules, not on the world's. I pray that you'll help all of us to serve you in everything that we're doing, those who are doing those things that are visible and those who are doing those things that are not. Lord, you will be glorified through it all if it's done in the right heart. Help us to have the right heart and uh, to serve you with everything that we do. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. And I want to praise the Lord for all of you heroes out there who do things like that that nobody knows about, cleaning crews, maintenance crews, those of you who go to work and glorify the Lord. Praise God. Kiddos, we're going to make our exit now, so please walk, don't run down the aisle there. And while they are doing that, would you please all stand up, greet the folks around us.